Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and I'm here today bringing you something that surprises even me, and that is my second straight game replay, battle report, whatever you want to call it, here from the bridge of Tier 10 American Destroyer USS Gearing. I, I mean, I'm an American Destroyer fanboy, but for years I have maintained that the line basically is at its peak at Fletcher and that gearing is, gearing is largely a disappointment. However, I've been playing a lot of gearing in the last week or so. I've been trying to get, a, get, a, get, to get games and data together to put together my little uh, how to play gearing video that, uh, for my, you know, how to play the American Destroyer line series. And, and I gotta say, guys, the ship has surprised me. And seven and a half years in, I'm wondering if maybe after all this time, I haven't misjudged this ship. Now, she's had a lot of changes over the years, and I, I admittedly haven't played a lot of her over the, over the course of that, right? Like in the sense of when I was first playing gearing way back in the day, she only had the 16 and a half kilometer torpedoes, and she was stuck at like a 5.9 detection. That was all you got. But gearing's come a long way. The game has evolved. We've had captain skill changes. All these other destroyers have entered the mix. A lot of gunboats, a lot of high detectability gunboats at tier 10 that are very popular. A lot of folks play those. You still have access to the 16 and a half kilometer torpedoes, but you now have access to the shorter 10 and a halfs as well, if you want to play those out of the Fletcher line, uh, back from Fletcher. And so a lot of quality of life changes over gearing. And I guess maybe I just haven't explored her properly. So here we are spawning onto the north side of Haven. And my immediate reaction is there is zero chance that I'm moving south. You saw, if you're paying attention, I turned, I turned on my engines. I immediately turned. I am moving due west because I know there's a cruiser doing somewhere exactly what that Annapolis is doing. He is literally trying to snuggle up to that island and prevent schmucks like me from coming around the corner and, and doing what I want to do, which is spotting and all the rest of this sort of thing. Torpedoes, whatever. He wants to get his radar up there and beat me up, and I want none of it. So for the moment, I'm going to be playing way over on the extreme uh, edge of the map here, over on the 910 line, and vomiting torpedoes out in their face. And I've got very long-range torpedoes on a about a 90-second reload, which is not terrible. I can't really complain about that, given how hard they hit, how fast they move, and how far they travel. I'll put the build up here again on the screen, just so you can have a peek. It's the same build that we looked at last week during last week's gearing video. Um, so none of that's changed. Um, and um, and have, a, have a look, in, uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Starting off here, I'm literally just determined to spot for my team. Haven is a map that is very constricted in terms of sight lines, right? It's very common that teams will... We'll have to play the extreme edges of the map, the 1-2 line, the 9-10 line. And, but you can play them from, you know, like you see where our Kerr first is. He's got pretty decent island cover. He can shoot over that island at people over on the 10 line. He doesn't need to be out where his ship is very exposed, but he needs someone spotting for him. And right now, that's me. Three and a half minutes into the game, 30,000 spotting damage. Now, we talked last week in last week's video about the return of team play, about spotting damage coming back and being more rewarded. And you're going to see some of that and some more of that in this game. This game is kind of a bit of a an additional data point in my argument that spotting damage may finally be rewarded adequately in World of Warships. But there's something else I want you to pay attention to over the course of this game, and that is how much damage I take. We'll come back to that later. For now, I'm continuing to harass, throw, throw torps. I did get one into the Annapolis earlier, and uh, just continue to try and keep these guys lit. I have to play a very cautious, very mm, cagey game, right? The gearing was over in the C cap. He capped it. He's left. Z44 is now picking that cap up. I'm trying to keep the Annapolis lit by staying about 10 or 11 kilometers behind him. If I'm inside of 10, I'm at his radar range, and I'm trying to stay out of that. So I've got to I've got to try and play very cagey with that guy. And, and, you know, work, work the edges of his, his detection range and so on and so forth. But I'm expecting the opposing gearing to come over here and try to play this flank. I mean, the only reason I didn't dive the cap was I wanted to specifically get out here and do the spotting that I've been doing. And you can see now five minutes in, up over 50,000 spotting damage. Just from just sitting out here, keeping these battleships lit and being a right royal jerk. Torpedoes keep coming back every 90 seconds. I'm trying to throw them in wide waves down there to give these guys 
fewer good, very few good options of places that they can avoid them. Montana is literally broadside is now the opposing gearing moving up. I think he's actually spotted on the curve first hydro. I shouldn't have had him on the surface, and yet I'm going to pick him up here on the surface right here. Yep, he's he is not a legendary gearing. He has the 5-9 detection. I do get a torp into the Montana back there. I'm able to completely avoid detection there from the gearing, but the Annapolis, I do just edge inside the radar. The Annapolis takes around some shots at me, pops his funny button, but I'm out of that radar range just as quickly. He's only going to get two salvos. Okay, dodged a bullet there. There we go. 70,000 spotting damage now. Six minutes in. Team is doing well. We're up a kill. They've picked up the, Friedrich, the uh, Friedrich, uh, Felix Schultz off the other flank as uh, submarines are dueling inside the B cap, it looks like. Our Z44 has done the Lord's work. He's picked up C, so we're not down on caps. It's a pretty tight game. Only about 35 points apart here. So again, like we've talked about with gearing, I'm playing very patient, very deliberate. I'm managing my detection radius. I know the opposing gearing now out in front of me somewhere. Continuing to try to keep eyes on the things that I want my team to shoot at. There goes the Annapolis. That is a huge kill. And I give a I make sure to give a shout out to the Georgia there who just did me a huge solid. Up two ships, even on caps, looking good for the moment. This Burgonia and Montana will continue to play very cagey games back and forth, back and forth. All game. You're going to see this all game. They're going to move. They're going to rotate forward. They're going to rotate back. They're going to rotate forward. They're going to rotate back. Just keeps happening. And I'm going to continue to throw out torpedoes in the hopes that, well, sooner or later, I'll catch them with something. Pergonia, for the moment, looks like he's going very slow, actually reversing a bit. Over 10 kilometers to travel. Chances are those torpedoes are not going to be where I want them to be when he appears. But, um, well, I'm going to throw them anyway. When you've got torpedoes on a 90-second reload like this, I feel like you want to just cycle them as quickly as possible. You, you don't want to hold them in the barrels because every every moment you're holding them in the barrel is is just opportunity wasted, right? Uh, damage you're not... Potential damage you're not getting. Damage you're not getting. Shimikaze torpedoes hit hard enough and the reload is long enough that I feel like you probably have to be a little more deliberate. But with Fletcher and gearing... I am usually just taking every opportunity I can to vomit torpedoes. At best, you will see me stagger launches, right? I'll, I'll launch one, I'll wait 30, 40 seconds, I'll launch the other rack, and I'll just continue to stagger things a bit, because sometimes you can get good floods to stick that way. I do get one into the stern of the Burgonia there. The opposing gearing sort of caught out over there on the 8 line with the, uh, the friendly Z-44 crawling up his stern. I don't want to wander too close to that guy yet with this Montana in my face, but if he'll back off, maybe there's something there. And he is turning out now. Torpedoes are not quite back yet. Up over 110,000 spotting damage now. And we're not even to the halfway mark of the game. Okay, there we go. Torpedoes are finally back in the tubes. I'm expecting this, this Montana to turn south. I'm going to intentionally short this salvo. Now, here's the trick. Right? If he's going to turn and run due south, I'm going to be shooting these right up his stern. The odds of those landing meaningful damage are pretty small. You saw earlier, just a second ago, I did you know, land one on the, tor on the stern of the Burgonia for like 10,000 damage. It was kind of terrible. Um, but if nothing else, continuing to dump these out there keeps these guys on their toes. Right? They know I'm here. They know they have no chance of spotting me. They better keep their rudders moving. They better keep their courses changing or they're going to pay the price. Approaching 150,000 spotting damage now as my team is taking very good advantage. Off my bow, off my port bow is this Hatsuma back there in the, uh, the D-cap. And he is getting mercilessly farmed by the Neptune and the Klauschwitz back in, in and around our C-cap. And I am getting credit for all of that spotting damage because those guys would not have eyes on him if I was not here. Halfway mark of the game, 170,000 spotting damage on only three torpedo hits. And we're just about on the verge of getting into the only gunfight that I'm really going to get into this game. Because you notice how, how close I am to this smoke cloud the opposing gearing put up in front of me. I intentionally slow down. I don't want to drive too close to that guy. But he's getting pushed by the Z44. And so now, basically, in defense of my teammate, 
it's time to open up. For some reason, I had AP in the barrel on that first salvo. I don't know why. I didn't look that close. We swapped to the HE because, well, I've got to do something. And we are going to land just enough shells to pick up that kill. I immediately want to break contact. I do not want to get shot by that Burgonia HE or, or anything the Montana throws at me. Luckily, the Monty does get one salvo up. All of it misses. A whole lot of splashing going on. And for the first time all game, I'm actually going to take a few minutes of opportunity here to sit in smoke and farm this Montana as he decides, no, I am not sitting out here for this to happen. He immediately is going to start turning off to the south. And I'm going to get at least uh, one fire there on the forward superstructure. Trying now for the fire on the aft superstructure. I think I'm going to pick it up in the next salvo or two here. I don't have a ton of damage, but I have enough for a combat scout badge. We talked about that last time. Um, I am a huge fan of that award. I think it is arguably better than almost any other any other uh, achievement you can earn in a destroyer. Certainly uh, a stealthy destroyer like a Shimo or a, a unique upgrade of legendary gearing here in World of Warships. Under nine minutes to play, the enemy team is really in trouble. They're upside down like five ships. We've firmly pushed them back into the corner of their map. They have no chance of spotting me at this stage. The Satsuma is getting pummeled. The Montana's running for his life. The Puerto Rico back on the H line getting farmed. He's perma spotted by the Shimakaze off of his stern. You see our, our friendly Shima down there on the I line. Bergonia is spotted. I'm going to start vomiting torpedoes out in that direction on the assumption that he's going to move back this way. I'm actually kind of sort of hoping I might catch the Puerto Rico with one of those, but 13 kilometers is a long way for those torpedoes to go before they actually hit something. Satsuma realizes he can't sit there. He's trying to turn out, but in the end, it's not going to work out for him between the Neptune shells, the Georgia shells, the Kerfer shells. He is going out right there as I basically hit up to 190,000 spotting damage. Now, keep in mind, guys, I have only been lit, like actually actively spotted on the surface twice in this entire game. Once sort of of my own volition when I opened fire at the gearing, and then earlier when the, the Annapolis had radar on me for, what, 10, 15 seconds, he got two salvos off, and I was gone again. Hoping in vain that I'm going to get one of these torpedoes in the stern of the Burgonia like we did earlier, but it's not going to happen. Montana's getting farmed out by God and everybody. This is this is over, right? There's two ships left now, the Puerto Rico and the Burgonia. They're all the way down here in the bottom of the map. I'm, again, I'm really hoping that these torpedoes have the range, the legs to get down there and maybe clip the Puerto Rico. But he hits the border pretty quick. He's going to get flipped around a lot faster than I would thought. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get any more torpedoes there. Bergonia is only about six and a half kilometers off my port, star, port side there. I've got to be very cautious. I do not want to broach getting too close to this guy. I don't want him to know where I am. I certainly don't want him to shoot his HE at me. French HE is nasty, but before any of that comes back into play, right as my torpedoes reload, the game ends, and, uh, and we're all done. In result of this game, not too shabby. Basically the better part of a million credits. Only 50,000 damage, not too bad. But I want you to notice something as we go through these slides. I didn't take a single point of damage that game. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a flawless victory in USS Gearing. Spotted only twice, barely taking any damage. Not a, you know, top of team um, uh, XP result there. Only 1,700 base. But I'm not really going to complain about that. When I got 50,000 damage, I got over 200,000 spotting damage for my team. I feel finally adequately rewarded for that with my big pile of credits and 1,700 base XP. And, um, and yeah, I, uh, this is a, this is to me, this is the way destroyer, like I'm going to toot my own horn for a minute. This feels like a good destroyer game to me here in world of warships, right? I did my job. I was barely spotted. I racked up a ton of spotting damage for the team. I harassed, I chased, I cleaned up, uh, you know, a low health destroyer that was pushing me or at least in my face. And I contributed to the win in a way that was meaningful without getting my ship shot to crap and uh, without, you know, taking ridiculous risks. I did exactly what I needed to do. The team took advantage of that information and a nice solid win here on Haven. I look forward to seeing more games like this. Let me know if you guys are seeing similar results in your Destroyer games and if you're able to duplicate this kind of result. In the meantime, guys, appreciate you. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.